Hey guys, so today we're filming a chatty get ready with me with the newest palette from Muse Beauty. I believe this is limited edition. I feel like it's so perfect for the season that we're going into and I really like the idea of doing something smaller that really embodies the season that we're going into. So it's almost like when fashion brands do special collections for upcoming seasons. I feel like this is that kind of palette. Now I probably have these shades over and over again and I know some of you had commented in my community tab post that this did not have enough deepening up shades which I do agree looking at it but I really love how it's kind of just like a capsule of the moment of time that is spring 2021. I know that's probably not the most popular opinion but that's just how I feel. I'm gonna go ahead and get into swatches because we got a lot of work to do. So this first shade is called Dahlia and it's a matte shade with shimmer in it. I'm gonna swatch this way because I feel like the color stories kind of make sense in that angle. Um, these are not picking up on my fingers as smoothly as I was expecting. I feel like I've had really good luck with this brand, especially with their original palette. I also did finally end up getting their Van Gogh palette, but I have not tried it out yet, the Starry Night palette. So the first shade is called Dahlia, then we have Begonia, and then we have Carnation. So that Carnation shade is very pigmented and swatched really nicely. Yeah, the shimmers just don't feel as creamy as what I was thinking in my head. So then we have Peony, Sorel, and Basil. There's those three shades. And then the last row is a beautiful selection of purples. So we have lavender, violet, and ester. So there are the swatches for the beautiful palette that's new from Muse Beauty. So if you guys are hanging out with me in this video, don't forget to leave a comment, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Engagement has been really low. I feel like my views are not as high as I'm used to. So if you guys are hanging out, watching this get ready with me, highly recommend leaving a flower emoji just so I know you guys are here. And I love seeing my comment section full of emojis from you guys. It really helps my channel out as well because it makes the video look really good. If there's a lot of comments, the YouTube algorithm pushes it out into the world. So anyway, today I actually have a topic in mind of what I wanna talk about in this Get Ready With Me. So I'll get to that in a second here, but I feel like, I feel like I need to use that shade Sorel in my crease. So I'm gonna do that while I let you know what today's topic is. So what I really, really, really wanted to talk about today is just kind of that pressure that social media puts on us or just what it's like living in 2021, like how much more different the world is now than maybe the world some of us grew up in and how much influence things we see online have on ourselves. And I know this weekend, I feel like I've been dealing a lot with my husband feeling that way. And he's usually really good about not letting media get to him, but he more so is influenced by seeing what our friends have and what they've achieved in their lifetimes and like where we are versus where they are and things like that. And I feel so bad for him because I really don't know how to help him other than just talk to him about it. And I feel like the way my parents raised me was always to look on the bright side and you know, always be happy with what you have. And, you know, my mom was one of those people that always told me to, like, compare what people that have less than me um, are going through. And I don't know that that's always the best thing because I feel like that way I tend to downplay a lot of my success as well because I'm always like, oh, well, like, you know, it could be worse or stuff like that when if I like achieve something really great about myself, I like downplay that and I mean, maybe it's like just being humble, but I feel like the world in 2021 is so different now. But on the other hand, I feel like my husband's struggling with something different. I think he just 
is really feeling like, oh, look at all our other friends that are the same age as he is, that have bigger houses, nicer cars, more vacations, bigger paychecks. And it's always going to be so easy to compare yourself to other people that have more than you. But I feel like, to me, I was just thinking like, okay, honey, but think of all the people that have less than what we have. And I don't know if that's really the right thing either. But I think what I've told myself over the years of being like on YouTube and stuff is to always remember that you can't compare yourself to other people because it's just like gonna send you down such a slippery slope and there are times where I will start comparing you know like my channel's growth to like other channels and things like that and I'll start feeling really sad or like why am I not growing or is my channel not good enough and I feel like I've gotten to the point where I can identify where I'm at like mentally with stuff like that and then kind of talk myself into thinking more positively and then like pulling myself out of that thought process because I feel like it's never a good thing to go down that path. It's just gonna honestly make you feel so miserable if you try to compare yourself to your friends and family that have more than you or just if you stick to the YouTube thing like just have more subscribers than you like you're never gonna be happy because there's going to be always somebody with better ideas, better equipment, better makeup looks, better skills, you know, so you can't do that to yourself. And I don't know, I just started thinking about all the people that probably feel the way my husband does. And I felt really bad. And I was like, you know, maybe I can make a video about it and talk to people and let them know that it's okay to not be a hundred percent where you want to be in life right now like it's okay to still have way to go and I think we're all like a work in progress at the end of the day and everybody's going through something that's the one thing I've always noticed is like no matter how happy and rich and successful people look there's always something going on that we don't even know about and nor do people want to talk about so I can already picture the comments but you guys know I need I need a deepening up shade so I'm gonna grab to this shade called uh, Lux in the Blend Bunny palette. Also, I will say the owner of Blend Bunny Cosmetics left me such a sweet comment on my Instagram. She just said that she'd been watching my videos and I'm so relaxing and I'm like, really? <laughs> That's so sweet. Nobody's ever called me relaxing before. That's for sure. But it was a very nice comment. So very happy to be supporting so many great small businesses on my channel. But yeah, anyway, so back to how he was feeling and how I was feeling and I just wanted to talk to you guys and tell you that that's how I handle it. I really just shut it down. Like as soon as I start comparing myself, I shut it down and if I see somebody achieving something, I try so hard to celebrate that uh, for other people because even though like I definitely will feel like a little bit jealous or like a little bit kind of like I didn't achieve something. If somebody like passes me in numbers and stuff, I still want to shut down the negative feelings and bring forward my positive feelings because honestly, like, I feel like, I, I don't know. I just, I just feel like it's important for women to celebrate women. And even if it's, somebody else doing something and they do it better than you, I would rather celebrate that than ignore it and just be like bitter, you know? So I don't know, I just felt like talking about that topic with you guys. So you'll have to let me know what your thoughts are. I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels this way nor is like my husband the only one that feels bad sometimes about not being at the top or you know, like maybe we wanna make more money or Maybe we want a bigger house. Like that's one thing that we were maybe sort of looking at, but our housing market is so crazy here uh, with specials and stuff. The kind of house we want would be so much more money than we can afford right now. So um, we, I think we're gonna not maybe look as aggressively. Like we really thought we had found a house and we were gonna maybe build. And I'm like, uh, no, I don't wanna be stressed. You know, who wants to be stressed paying mortgages? Like, not me. I feel like life is, like, stressful enough as it is. So I actually for once was like, mm, you know, I don't feel comfortable. Like, I'm rather happy, like, 
paying off my little mortgage than paying like, you know, double for a bigger house. So there's just so many things to be grateful right now about even in a panoramic, <laughs> like, I don't know. So I'm always like one of those people that like really tries hard to look on the bright side. And I think that can be like a really annoying qual quality. Uh, but I honestly feel like just to me, my life is better because I don't entertain negative, negative thoughts. And I think another important thing too is like, if you're a person that has a really hard time being positive, I don't know. I personally think it's better to surround yourselves with positive people because positivity is infectious and so is negativity. So if you have a negative mindset and then you're always surrounded by negative people, how is that going to lift you up, you know? I don't know. Like, even me, I feel like I tend to feel more negative when I'm surrounded by people thinking negatively. And so I've... I just feel like I'm so blessed because, like, my best friend... Um, she doesn't live in Fargo anymore, but she's like literally one of the most positive, sweet, like kind people I've ever known. And like I try to be that way for my husband because my husband, I think, is definitely more of a pessimist. And that's okay. We balance each other out. Um, but I try to be like the happy, positive energy in his life. And I don't know. I just think that I just wanted to share how uh, how I try to keep things positive. I'm really, really not liking this palette. I am experiencing patchiness. Um, this shimmer shit, I was trying to do like a halo look. And I used the Denisa Myricks uh, color fix just to see if I could make the green like a little bit punchier. I was going to use it as a base, but I don't think it was doing anything. So I just used some NYX glitter glue. And I'm not feeling this. I'm not feeling this. I will definitely give this palette another shot, but I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't think I like it. I can't believe how patchy the mattes are, which is so crazy because the uh, mattes in the original palette, the one they first launched, so pretty, so vibrant. This one is not the same to me so I don't know if I got a dud but if I zoom you guys in on this look the mats are not looking good at all and the other thing too I wanted to talk about is like with influencers, like bigger influencers, like they always show like such a happy-go-lucky life. And I was watching like one of my favorite YouTubers. She is a luxury channel and she does a lot of like Louis Vuitton hauls and like she has the most amazing luxury handbag collection. And she recently did a Q&A video and I thought it was so interesting and not that like anybody's misery is something to be like oh wow cool you know but it was just interesting because she shared like how she has all these nice things but she has like her um like when but she shared like when she was a child how her mom actually left her family and how she had a very lonely childhood because of that and I was like wow like you would never know just by watching her channel she seems like she has everything she's got this beautiful house three beautiful kids every designer bag you could ever imagine and for her to share something like that I was like that's so amazing for her to share because you do you look at people online and you're like oh they have the most amazing life and my life sucks like that's how people feel and sometimes that's how I feel and I definitely know that's how Rail feels and that's why I said like to me it's so important to like shut down those feelings because if you let it creep in it's gonna take over but I know that what works for me isn't gonna work for everyone obviously I'm one person in a world full of people so I'm just trying to share with you guys what works for me how I try to just you know realize that my journey is my journey and everybody has their own path and 
it's so easy for all of us to get caught up in like the day to day and all the nice things that we all each have and um, really have FOMO for the amazing moments that we don't feel like we'll experience but I don't know I feel like everybody has their time and your time will come and you just gotta you know take life as it comes and be happy and try and make other people happy and be the best you you can be you know <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I'm just on my high horse here giving a sermon about trying to stay positive but I don't know that's just generally how I feel um and I just feel like making people happy is so much more rewarding than being negative and I know some people can't help themselves but I also know some people just thrive off of being negative and gossipy and um I don't know all the things like drama Ugh, it's the worst this I just pulled out for a shop by stash this is the mac Pro Conceal and Correct palette, and I have this really old Urban Decay brush. is from when I originally bought that Urban Decay makeup that got me into Urban Decay, and it actually still works really well. So I've been using the color corrector in this palette as well as a concealer because I wanted to try a color corrector and I have one in my collection, so why not? But the other thing that really got me thinking about this topic too is the recent interview with Meghan Markel and Prince Harry and how even the royal family, like actual prince and princesses, you know, even they have struggles. And I mean, I know people like will say like, oh, we knew we they were miserable, but it's like, I don't know. You know, you think like, oh, their life must be perfect. They must have everything. And it's like, well, sometimes it really isn't like that. And I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I did just use the Gucci powder. I got this the other day. I decided that my shade is 07. You guys are gonna laugh because I literally bought, I bought like three of these shades trying to figure them out. Let me just show you. See, I have, so I have uh, five, six, and seven. Um, I think five is a little, I mean, it would have worked. And then we have six, which I bought. But I feel like seven was the more warm toned of the three. And this is described as, I don't know, but it's made in Italy and it smells like bougie old lady. And now I have my two babies and they're together. So very, very excited about that. And I, I like it. I think it does a good job. So you guys will have to let me know, but let's do bronzer. Cause I just got my Jaclyn Hill stuff in. So I'm gonna swatch this situation. Ooh, that's dark. And then there's the blush and highlighter. So we have Hot Lava and Coco Rich. I feel like Coco Rich is like a MAC shade. I feel like that bronzer is gonna be too red for my skin tone. Say a little prayer, guys. Here we go. So I'm gonna grab the Sigma brush and I'm just gonna, oh God. I will say that the compact, I don't like. It's very bulky. So if you like slim packaging, I would avoid this situation because it's very bulky. I feel like unnecessarily bulky. I feel like that made my face look very orange. So for blush, I'm gonna use this refer brush and this looks so pigmented, I'm scared. Holy crap, that color is pretty though. It's very much like a poppy shade so I think if you're deeper than me this will work for you as well I could have probably gone a little bit lighter but you know what this is the color combo I really liked so I went with that for highlighter I'm gonna play with this one this is Vava Boom and I'm just gonna ooh. That's so pretty. This on a deep, deep, deep skin tone is gonna be stunning, but I wanted to kind of use it as a blush light, like a blush highlight. Oh, that might be too much. That might be too much. It's kind of like my skin tone though. 
Okay, I better stop while I'm ahead. I'm trying to drape my blush. I don't know what's happening. Ah! Okay, let's spray the face. So for a lip, I'm gonna use Dynamite by Proper Beauty. These are already available on their website. They launched on Monday this past week for International Women's Day. And thank you guys if you use my code already. Thank you so, so much. And yeah, these are so nice and creamy. I know a lot of people aren't wearing lipstick at this moment in time and it's really hard to wear a lippy with a mask. I totally get it, but man oh man, I'm so glad that these were sent to me. I'm totally gonna rock these around the house and I don't have to wear a mask while I'm at work just because I work around like my family. So it's people I see anyway all the time, but yeah. Really like this shade. Okay guys, so here is the final look. Let's all just pretend that I actually did my hair. I didn't do my hair. I turned on my hair straightener and I was like, you know what? People are just gonna have to deal with this situation right now. And I threw in a hair clip and that's that on that. I do wanna give my shirt a shout out. Oh my gosh, I love this shirt. It is from Target. It says, feminism is for everybody and my favorite part of the whole situation is it's a nice long shirt, so it actually covers your butt if you like to wear leggings or jeans. It's perfect, and it was on sale the other day, so you can get it for 20% off, and it's like under $15, which is, you know, where I thrive in the t-shirt department. So anyway, all the general announcements aside, I will link everything on my face in the description box. Some of those codes might be affiliate codes if you do use them to shop. Thank you so much for supporting my channel, my little slice of paradise here on the YouTubes. Now, as far as the new makeup, I tried the palette. I definitely need to try some more. I wasn't 100% impressed with this guy, which I wasn't expecting. I was honestly expecting to be blown away by the palette because I had such a wonderful experience trying their original palette, so we'll see how it goes. I will keep you guys posted in my March rankings video. Also, I always recommend you guys follow me on Instagram because if I do any makeup of the day type posts, I usually post all of that on Instagram. <laughs> as far as the Jaclyn Hill stuff, so far so good. I do think the packaging is really excessive. Like, it's even thicker than the Ofra packaging, and I feel like the Ofra packaging is very thick as well. It's hardly thicker than the Ofra packaging, but because of the weight and stuff, it just feels unnecessarily bulky. So I just want to mention that. I did pick up her holiday palette. This is the Flare. This was the one for deeper skin tones, and I honestly kind of regret it because the only shade that really works for me in this palette is Glow Up. Everything else is a little too dark. So at some point, I think I will put this on my Poshmark in case anybody wants to pick it up. But I do think these are nice. I just wish they had not been so bulky. And I'm not sure how this is all translating on camera. Right now in my viewfinder, I look really orange. So I'm a little bit terrified that I look like a tandoori chicken. But I will double check. And if it looks gross, I'm not posting this video. But anyway, so far, I'm happy with the quality. I would love to see her do more shades because I feel like there are a lot of really light shades and then not so many options for medium, tan, deep skin tones and definitely not for deep, deep skin tones. So would love to see her expand more of that. I also think these would have been better if they were individual products. I think it's nice that she did them as a duo because she could probably charge more money. But I feel like it was really hard because, for example, I feel like this blush shade works okay for my skin tone. But I felt like the bronzer was a really dark shade for my skin tone, especially when I'm not tan. So I would have loved to be able to just customize and pick. So I would have rather ended up with like three individual type situations instead of a duo like this. But we'll see. I'm sure there's more to come from Jaclyn Hill. So that was my only criticism of that. The Gucci powder I've been wearing for a while, so I really do like that so far. And then I didn't get to try these out for you guys on camera, but I figure I'll just open them up so we can look at them. So I definitely didn't buy these for the packaging. I know a lot of people were really into the packaging. I was honestly more intrigued by the shade. So this is the darkest shade, I think. This is called Under My Plum, and it just looks so glowy and pretty. 
So I'm so excited to play with this in a, another video. The packaging does feel honestly really cheap. I'm surprised. They feel really lightweight and they don't feel like there's much to them. So, and then this is the other shade. This is called Look Don't Touch. And I thought this was going to be more of a coral shade, but it definitely looks more like a pink. Ooh, I don't know that I love that color. So those are the two shades I picked up. I know there's one other shade. That one definitely looked really light. So not planning on getting that, but these two, not exactly what I expected. Jury's still out on those. So I will put them on my face and keep you guys posted in an upcoming video. But yeah, that is it for my chatty get ready with me. These are really hard to do. Oh my gosh. I feel like people that do chatty get ready with me is make it look so easy, but honestly, Putting makeup on and talking about a really deep topic at the same time is really hard. Makes me also really appreciate Bailey Syrian's Murder Mystery Makeup Monday videos because how can you talk about murder and like remember all those details and still do your makeup? Blows my mind. Anyway, that is it, you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you in my next video on Friday. Bye!